Three Points TV, myself the T's outside the Emirates. We finished Arsenal 3, Bournemouth 0. I'm with Antoine today outside the stadium. He's come to see the mighty Arsenal do the business. Two games to go. Antoine, what I'm are you feeling saying? good. Um, How are you feeling? Some people know me know that I began here as a steward 10 years ago. So a long time I was one of these people wow. in the orange and yellow jackets watching Arsenal go through that period where we weren't winning anything but FA Cups and obviously we're grateful for that. But I really feel like that sense of belief has returned from the hybrid days now. Fans are happy, fans are smiling. And despite a frustrating first half where in years gone by would have become the second half where the missed chances would have weighed onto the players' minds and they probably would have been a nil-nil or even Bournemouth could have grabbed a goal. This team won't allow that to happen. There was still confidence that we'd find the way, even if it came from a penalty, we grind that out and we push forward. And I knew that even more goals were coming. We just looked so full of confidence that any team that comes to the Emirates is in for a challenge. Obviously, Aston Villa's standard up to the challenge, but normally they know they're going to face a team that's strong from the back to the front. In the summer, we can make some tweaks at the front, but I was very pleased with today's performance. And I think going forward, it's just a case where if Arteta can have a really good summer transfer window. Right now, this particular campaign is not in our hands. Obviously, we can keep winning, but even if we do and City win, then they're going to win the whole thing. But I am confident that this is the season before the season. The next season, we're going to we're going to fly. How do you, um, Antoine? Now, I mean, now that I've got you here. How would you sum up Declan Rice's, you know, I think Declan performances Rice has been, as an Arsenal player since Declan he signed Rice with been the club? Superb because there's so much pressure that comes with a hundred million plus price tag coming from another London team. People knowing that he was in Chelsea's academy to begin with, so he had no real Arsenal connection. But when he put on that red and white shirt, it's like I'm watching Tony Adams sometimes. And I personally think. A few seasons from now, he's going to be the Arsenal captain simply because he carries himself. You in know, such when a you manner. heard that, Pete. Yeah, he carries himself in such a manner that he's nothing but inspirational, and he's always a player you can trust, you can lean on, and even despite making a mistake, obviously against Tottenham, it's a rare mistake. And I was glad that he got a goal. Glad that bit by bit he's growing into that position, despite changes around him. I think he's going to be the linchpin, and he's going to give. Erdegaard space to really flourish knowing that behind him yeah. slightly to the left is a Declan Rice that is reliable and I was thinking about today me and my brother we were watching from the director's box just a little shout out there um, <laughs> basically Saliba's at the point now and I'm talking defensively that when a player runs alongside him they're making the decision of am I even going to be able to get past him so they do a different thing they'll pass it they don't even want to take him on and when you have that psychological advantage over players it makes it so much easier for you to one defend but also for yeah. your team because they're it. in the tunnel thinking they are not Sleep, it's going to be a tough night and I think eventually Declan's developing that in other players' minds now when they come to the Emirates or when they face Arsenal yeah. thinking wow in the middle we're going to be running a lot because Declan's going to be there he's going to clean it up and even then when he gets the ball we're going to have to yeah. chase him this so I'm just, I'm just really excited about this team and obviously I didn't even mention the players that have been killing it consistently Erdegaard, Saka Trossard um, Trossard has been an absolute oh steal I it? think one mistake he's Arteta made last season was when Jesus came back from injury rushing him back into the side and taking shots out now. I think he should have just really had a, 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 a format that was working for him a team yeah. that was working for him and I think that was a learning experience for him hence why Jesus is on the bench now. Yeah. Um, the biggest headache for Arteta going forward is finding his best starting eleven because we're going to have so many good players which is what we've been screaming for as fans but, 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 but this is what we've been quite crying for exactly. Antoine I mean in terms of squad depth we finally got that now yeah. it's like not everywhere you know, but it's on the way it's, it's very on, the much on the way but I mean even when he bought Jesus he made yeah. you know he was a part exactly. of that third goal if you take Osaka for Jesus you're not unhappy as a fan no. I'm excited you're either not. way yeah. does he play the same you know Saka something's going to happen and he did make something exactly. happen we got exactly. the third goal exactly. you know it was exactly. like good night to yeah. Bournemouth exactly um, Let's let's wrap it up now. I mean, look, we've got a massive game at Old Trafford Huge. next week. Um, especially if Man City, if something happens with the Man City and Wolves games mm. tonight, uh, that game is going to be. I think mentally, sig significant. whether significant or not, us going to Old Trafford has always been that hurdle we had to overcome. If you think about the end of the '49, was because of Manchester United. So we've been in this position been, before, exactly, you know, Antoine. We've always been the team that we had to test ourselves up against. Had to be the team that's either stopped us or we've had to push through to get to where yeah. we want to go. And I think 
mentally as a club, even if we don't win this season, like I said, if we can go to Old Trafford and put them to the sword, really, really beat this side. We haven't won there for a, a little while. We haven't exactly. won there a little while. Though. Exactly. So it good makes eight, a statement. Nine years, I, I, exactly. So it makes a statement that we can go anywhere and put them in performance. Yeah. So I think. As Arteta says all the time, you take it game by game, and the next game is a very important game, yeah. and we can make a statement that will help us not this season, but st- seasons going forward. Because if we do really beat them, even if it's only one 0 or two one, mm. next season when we go there, next season when they come to us, mm. they're going to be they're going to get smashed. And it leads me to ask you this question now: um, Would you say it was a disappointing season from Arsenal if we don't win the Premier League? I think it's a gross season. I wouldn't say I was disappointed simply because you win the Champions League for the first time in so many years. That was always going to be a struggle. I still think Arteta hasn't got the balance between cup and league. If you think about when we won the FA Cup, there was nothing going on in the league. The following seasons, he should have got to the Europa League finals in a consistent basis and should have won it for me. I don't think he can win the Champions League without smashing yeah. the Europa League. I'll give you an example. I interviewed Jose Mourinho so before he became the special one. He won the uh, right. Europa League he won before he Europa yeah, yeah. He set the precedent and that team had a winning spirit. Whereas yeah. Arteta's won an FA Cup, but most of those players are long gone. So it means yeah. that he's basically got a fresh team who haven't won anything yet. So yeah. to win something, that's the hurdle they have to overcome. Yes, so I want to say it's, it's disappointing, but coming next season, that's when he needs to do something. It needs to be a cup yeah. or the league. Um, and that means his squad depth and selection has to be super strong. Right. He's never going to play his full team in the Carabao no. Cup. In the FA Cup, I don't think he took it that seriously this time, which I hope he will going forward yeah. next season. And the league is obviously taking it seriously. Champions League once again. So mm. if I'm him, I'm looking at Champions League when he can mm. and think, OK, that Real Madrid team is stacked. Bayern yeah. were consistent. Yeah. Um, PSG won't have Mbappe, but they're very talented. Mm, yeah. So he's thinking, OK, what do I need to get my team to that level? Because right now we're competing in the league. And, and I think you saying that, it's a big, massive point that you make because... I think that's where we should be aiming for. Exactly. We should be aiming for that, you're, that you've absolute got a squad, best. Yeah. We're starting an eleven that can win the Champions League. You've got a squad. We're starting an eleven that can win the Premier League. Easy. Yeah. That's why City Absolutely. dominated last season, yeah, and correct. that's why, despite not having their best season this season, they're still yeah. top in the league. So if we can't raise our game, I'm talking obviously beyond the quarterfinals for the yeah. Champions League, yeah. then we're always going to be just below the level needed to dominate the Premier League. Mm. I think still think this is. A very good season. I think it's a learning season. I think as a manager, obviously, he's barely been in the job. So he, he's constantly learning, despite him looking like he's been doing it for decades. Um, I'm confident and proud of today, specifically if you think about the tribute to Daniel, to the Daniel, 14-year-old. Yes. Sadly, well, had his well life said, taken well way, said, too, yeah. way too young in a despicable, horrific attack, and for the club to not only do one tribute before the game but the second one at the 14th mm-hmm. minute, I think that was really important to show what Arsenal represents. Hashtag no more red and send the message to the community, to the wider community, for all of the fans around the world that we care about our young people and we also care about. Listen, I think we ended on that one, Anton. Thank you so much for coming.